ASTM C231 is the standard test method for air content of freshly mixed concrete by the pressure method. To perform this test, we will need the meter itself. There are two types of meters that employ the principles of Boyle's Law. They are commonly referred to as Type A and Type B, and both are considered to be of satisfactory design. The bowl of any meter must have a minimum capacity of 0 0.20 cubic feet. Furthermore, the diameter must be a minimum of 3 quarters to 1 and a quarter the height of the bowl. For the purpose of this training video, we will be using a Type B meter, whose cover assembly consists of air valves, air bleeder valves, petcocks, and a dial gauge. Other necessary equipment we'll need is a tamping rod or vibrator. If using a tamping rod, it must be 5 eighths of an inch in diameter, must have a length at least 4 inches greater than the depth of the bowl that we're going to be using, but cannot have a length greater than 24 inches, and at least one end must be rounded to a 5 eighths of an inch hemispherical tip. When the capacity of the bowl is less than one half cubic foot, the weight of our mallet should be 1.25 plus or minus one half pound. When the bowl is larger than one half cubic foot, the weight of the mallet increases to 2.25 plus or minus one half pound. If using a strike-off bar, the strike-off bar must be made of metal, and it must be one eighth of an inch thick, three quarters of an inch wide, and 12 inches long. If using a vibrator, the vibrator must meet the requirements described in ASTM C192, making and curing concrete specimens in the laboratory. A strike-off plate is permitted in ASTM C231. The strike-off plate can be metal, glass, or acrylic. If it's metal, the thickness must be at least one quarter inch. If it's glass or acrylic, the thickness must be at least one half inch. However, whether you're using a metal, glass, or acrylic plate, the length and width must be at least two inches greater than the diameter of the measure. If our concrete contains any aggregate larger than two inches, we will need to wet sieve it over a one and a half inch sieve. We will also need an empty container to hold additional water. A field favorite is always the plastic cylinder mold. And lastly, we will need a syringe to inject water into the petcocks and of course, a scoop. ASTM C231 can be used on relatively dense aggregates and cannot be used on lightweight aggregate or any type of highly porous aggregate. The maximum size aggregate permissible in this test is 2 inches. If there is any aggregate larger than 2 inches, the sample must be wet sieved over the 1.5 inch sieve. Also, before beginning our test, we must determine the aggregate correction factor. The procedure for the aggregate correction factor test can be found in Section 6 of ASTM C231. It is important to note that the aggregate correction factor does vary with different types of aggregates. It is also believed that the aggregate correction factor is not directly related to the absorption of the aggregate. Therefore, the only way for it to be determined is by completing this test. Also, before beginning our test, we'll have to select our consolidation method. In most cases, our consolidation method will be selected by the slump of the concrete. For instance, if the slump of the concrete is greater than 3 inches, our sample must be rotted. Furthermore, if we are going to be rotting, we want to fill our measure in three equal layers. Now when the slump of our concrete is less than one inch, we must vibrate. When vibrating, we want to fill our measure in two equal layers. Furthermore, we want to make three insertions into each layer with the vibrator. Finally, we want to take care when withdrawing our vibrator not to hit the sides of the measure. Also, we only want to vibrate long enough to achieve proper consolidation. 
We can do this by maintaining a constant duration of vibration. The duration of vibration will depend upon the type of concrete, type of vibrator, and type of measure. And never vibrate so long that escape of froth will occur. Now if the slump of the concrete is between 1 and 3 inches, either method of consolidation is acceptable. Now that we have an understanding of the equipment and limitations of ASTM C231, let's go through a detailed performance review. In this example, we will be using a type B meter. We will also be using a strike-off plate. And since the slump of the concrete was 5 inches, we will be using the rotting method. First, we must obtain our sample in accordance with ASTM C172, standard practice for sampling freshly mixed concrete. If there is any aggregate larger than 2 inches within our sample, we will wet sieve it over the 1.5 inch sieve. We can now clean and dampen the bowl. We can now add the first layer of concrete, filling the bowl to a third its volume. Be sure to move the scoop around the outside perimeter of the bowl for even distribution. We now want to rod this layer 25 times throughout its depth without forcibly striking the bottom of the bowl. Then we want to tap the sides of the bowl 10 to 15 times for consolidation. We can now add the second layer of concrete, filling the bowl to two-thirds its volume. When rotting this layer, we want to take care to penetrate the previous layer by approximately one inch. And then, once again, tap the sides of the bowl 10 to 15 times. We can now add the third layer and repeat the rotting and tapping procedure. Note that after tapping the third layer, the optimum amount of concrete above the rim of the measure is one eighth of an inch. However, a small quantity of representative concrete can be added or removed to correct for a slight deficiency or excess over the one eighth inch optimum. When striking off, we want to press the plate on the top surface of the concrete covering approximately two thirds of the bowl. Then, in a sawing motion, we want to withdraw the plate to finish only the area that we covered. We now want to cover the original two-thirds surface of the measure. Then, with vertical pressure on the plate, we want to advance the plate forward off the bowl in a sawing motion. We now want to incline our plate and give the top surface of our concrete several sweeps with the edge of the plate to ensure a smooth surface. We now want to clean and dampen the rim, flange, and cover assembly. We can now attach the cover assembly to the bowl. We now want to close the main air valve and open the petcocks. We can now inject water into one petcock until it exits the other. Now close the main bleeder valve and pump the dial to the initial pressure. For this meter, the initial pressure is minus 3. We now want to stabilize the gauge by the bleeder valve, by hand, or by the pump. Now close both petcocks and open the main air valve. Now with the main air valve still open, Tap the sides of the bowl sharply and stabilize the gauge by hand. After stabilization, read the gauge. We can now close the main bleeder valve and release the pressure. Finally, we want to report the air content to the nearest 0.1% after subtracting our aggregate correction factor. And this is the equation for reporting the air content by the pressure method. A subscript S equals A subscript 1 minus G, where A subscript S is the air content in the sample tested. A subscript 1 is the air content on the gauge reading, 
and g is the aggregate correction factor. And this will conclude ASTM C231, determining the air content of freshly mixed concrete by the pressure method.